Despite the brand's popularity, many people are unaware of the origins of Jack Daniels whiskey and how the recipe came to be. Every great company has a humble beginning, and Jack Daniels began with African-American head stiller Nathan Nearest Green. It all began when Jack ran away from home after both his mother and father died. Jack's father remarried before his death, but Jack despised his stepmother and was taken in by a local preacher named Dan Call. Call began teaching Jack about distilling, and in 1875, Jack and Call established a registered distilling business with funds from his late father's estate. Call left the company soon after for religious reasons, and Jack took over ownership. In 1884, Jack Daniel purchased the land on which the distillery now stands. He ran it until 1907 when he sold it to his nephew, Lemuel Lou Motlow, because he had never married or had children. For 40 years, Motlow ran the distillery. He changed the law in a case heard by the Tennessee Supreme Court in 1910. Since a statewide prohibition was enacted in 1910, legal distillation of Jack Daniels has been prohibited in Tennessee. The company then moved to St. Louis, Missouri and Birmingham, Alabama, but was unable to match the quality of Tennessee whiskey. Similar prohibitions affected both Missouri and Alabama, and after several years of repeals and changes to the law, the distillery was finally opened for business in 1947. For much of the brand's 150-plus year history, it was said that the young Jack learned his trade from a pastor named Dan Call. In reality, he learned to distill from an enslaved African named Nearest Green, whose contributions had been erased from history. Men like Nearest Green were left out of that account. Green, also known as Uncle Nearest, is known as the African-American master distiller. Uncle Nearest was born into slavery in Maryland in the 1820s and moved to Lynchburg, Tennessee, where he began distilling on a local farm in Lincoln County. He practiced this craft in addition to working in the fields. During his time on the farm, he developed a distinct distilling process that resulted in smooth textured, sugar maple, charcoal filtered whiskey. The charcoal filtration is what distinguishes Tennessee whiskey from bourbon, and it is this crucial component that has made Jack Daniels whiskey what it is today. Slavery and whiskey were inextricably linked in Southern history, rather than two separate threads. Not only did enslaved men make up the majority of the distilling labor force, but they also frequently played critical skilled roles in the whiskey making process. White distillery owners took credit for the whiskey in the same way that white cookbook authors frequently appropriated recipes from their black cooks. Green's enslavers were a firm called Landis and Green, who lent out Nearest Green for a fee to a local preacher named Reverend Dan Call. This was typical in an era when due to its reputation as dangerous, dirty work, enslaved men were frequently involved in the production of spirits. Nearest was a master distiller, and his sugar maple charcoal filled whiskey was the best in town. A young boy came to work at the farm where Nearest worked as the master distiller in the mid-1800s. The young boy was the 10th child in his family and had lost his mother to an unexpected illness when he was 4 months old, so it's not surprising that he began looking for things to do away from his family home. He worked as a chore boy for the preacher, milking cows, feeding slop to pigs, fetching water from the spring house, and doing everything else that farmhands do. He wasn't a privileged kid like Nearest. He was a worker. While working for the preacher, the young boy kept asking about the smoke coming up through the hollow on the 338-acre property. He knew there were men rushing back and forth with mules and wagons from that area, but he was never allowed to go. After some time as a chore boy, the preacher agreed to give in to the boy's curiosity and take him to the area on the property where the smoke was coming from. This is Uncle Nearest, he says, introducing the young boy to a coal black negro, as described in the boy's biography. He's the best whiskey maker I know, he said and he asked Nearest to teach the young boy everything he knew about distilling, especially his sugar maple charcoal filtering process. The most important thing to understand about this unique process is that it is the only difference between bourbon and Tennessee whiskey. Nearest was teaching the young boy how to make Tennessee whiskey. As time passed, the young boy continued to learn from Nearest and eventually grew old enough to start selling this unique whiskey in other towns near Lynchburg. During the Civil War, he sold to soldiers and discovered that he was an excellent salesman and entrepreneur. His whiskey quickly became the most popular in the neighborhood. During the Civil War, the young boy lost his father and became an orphan at the age of 15. He knew he'd have to fend for himself for the rest of his life, so he went into the whiskey business. Following the Civil War, once Nearest was free, the white chore boy turned businessman partnered with the preacher in the distillery, eventually purchasing the preacher's shares and renaming it after himself.
Nearest was asking to be his first master distiller, an unusual request for such a time and place. That young white chore boy eventually left the property, taking his growing whiskey business with him. Although Nearest retired and did not go to his new distillery, his sons, Louis, Eli, and George, all continued the family tradition of producing the best whiskey in the area and joined the young man at his new location. Charlie and Ott, Nearest's grandsons, also went to work for the new distillery. That young white boy who went on to become a brilliant businessman became known as one of the world's most famous whiskey makers. His legal name was Jasper Newton. Those in Lynchburg know him as Uncle Jack, and the rest of the world knows him as Jack Daniel. Call sold his distillery to Jack Daniel after emancipation. Although there are no images of Nearest Green, a photograph of one of his sons, George, shows him sitting next to Jack Daniel. Nearest Green's family has worked at the Jack Daniel distillery for seven generations and continues to do so today. He built a massive business around whiskey production, selling to soldiers during the Civil War, and becoming a popular whiskey source in Lynchburg and the surrounding towns. Newton hired Uncle Nearest after he was released and also hired Uncle Nearest's sons and grandsons. Newton's company grew to become a Texas-renowned brand, with a massive footprint and expansion that is now known as Jack Daniels. Over the years, Jack Daniel and his descendants made a lot of money from their whiskey company. The family sold it to Brown Foreman in 1956 for 20 million US dollars, or about 190 million dollars in today's money. While Nearest Green and his descendants appear to have been fairly compensated by the Daniel family, they did not own any of the distillery, and thus did not receive any of the millions. Uncle Nearest is a household name in and of itself. Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey is the top award-winning whiskey in America, inspired by the best whiskey maker himself. It's sold in all 50 states, 12 countries, and over 25,000 stores, bars, and restaurants. There are three distilled whiskeys available from the brand, a single barrel, premium aged option, a small batch option, and a master blend. For decades, Nearest Green's name, legacy, and contribution to whiskey were largely unknown outside of Lynchburg, Tennessee, despite the fact that after the Civil War, census data showed that Nearest Green and his family owned sizable plots of land and were wealthier than many white families living in Lynchburg. There's no mystery about the recipes in Jack Daniel's whiskey. The popular beverage has been around for 151 years, and the recipe can be found on the company's website. Some of the first hints about Nearest Green's role appeared in Daniel's official biography, which was published in 1967, more than half a century after his death. Green was mentioned approximately 50 times. Then, his name seemed to vanish. And the story of Nearest Green, the first known African-American master distiller, was lost in time. Slavery followed distilling as it moved inland in the late 1800s to the newly settled regions that would become Tennessee and Kentucky. Though slave ownership was not as common as it was further south, by the 1800s, many successful farmers had at least a few slaves who were often involved in whiskey production. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you with another interesting story.